My channel I'm so glad you stopped by today because today I'm gonna to show you guys how I made a crystal arctic fox I had so much fun with this piece and I even tried out a few new techniques just to change it up a little bit anyways let's get started okay guys so I'm gonna start on the clay first so I'm gonna show you guys how to make the head and then I'm gonna show you guys how to make the paws I'm gonna do the paws a little bit different this time though so for the head I'm gonna start out with my base which is basically just a foam ball I've already covered it in tin foil and I'm actually going to be gluing on a cone made of tin foil as well this is just going to be the base to work with and I'm gonna cover this completely in clay if you're curious on what type of clay I'm using I'm using original Sculpey so again, I'm going to completely cover this in clay. I don't need to cover the back half of the ball. I'm just kind of doing the front half of it where the cone is. And once I have a nice thick layer, then I can start adding details to it. Now I'm going to add the eyes, but a nice way to do that to make it nice and even is sometimes it helps to draw like a little grid on the face. So I'm going to draw a line down the middle and just kind of mark everything out so I have a rough idea of where to put the eyes. Once I have all of that drawn, I'm going to use my thumbs and I'm going to push them into the clay to mark where I want the eyes to go. Now the style of the fox that I'm doing is going to be kind of a crystal-y type ice fox, so I kind of wanted to give it kind of these blind eyes, so I've got these nice pieces of glass that are frosted over and I'm going to use these as the eyes. After I have them placed, I'm going to start adding some clay around them to make the eyelids and then using my tools to shape them. Next, I'm going to lay out where I want the mouth of the fox to be, so I'm going to take a strip of clay, I'm going to lay it across the face, and then I'm going to push it in and blend it into the side that I want the lip to be for. So since this is going to be the upper lip, I'm going to blend the clay upwards. After the upper lip is finished, I'm going to take a smaller piece of clay and I'm going to push that at the very bottom of the mouth, and that's going to be the bottom lip. So I'm going to blend that into the bottom of the face. Now for doing the nose, I'm going to add some extra clay to the very top of the snout. I'm going to blend that all in and then I'm going to use my tools to shape the nostrils and everything. So the first thing you want to do is you want to take your tools and you want to mark two even holes for where the nostrils are going to go. And then you're going to slowly use your other tools to kind of shape them into the correct shape. Now remember, this is a fox type creature, so if you're doing a different type of species, you'll probably want to look up some images to get the correct nose, because not all mammals' noses are designed the same. So say if you're doing a horse or even a bear, they're going to be a lot different than just doing this type of nose. So make sure you look for references when you want to do a nose, because they're actually very different between species. Okay, so we got the eyes, the mouth, and the nose all finished, and now I'm just going to start adding some extra details to the face. So I'm actually going to be adding these beautiful crystals that are nice and clear to the forehead of the fox. That way, after we have the fur all laid down, these are going to be poking through on the forehead. I actually had these crystals along with a bunch of other crafting material given to me by another Etsy shop owner and I'm going to leave her information down below if you guys want to check out her shop. She has a bunch of really cool things and she also has a really good price range for the type of things that she's selling. Okay, so after finishing adding all my crystals, I'm going to start cleaning everything up. I'm going to remove all the extra clay that I really honestly don't need, and then I'm going to actually add a little bit of clay to the very top of the head where I want the ears to go. I'm doing this to kind of give a nice place to connect the ears to the face so they'll be a bit more sturdy. Instead of just gluing them directly onto a flat surface, I can glue the ears around this piece of clay once I'm adding them. Okay, so our fox's face is all finished. I'm going to put this in the oven at 275 Fahrenheit for roughly about 45 minutes. Now one thing, if you're going to start getting crystals and things, you might want to test things out to make sure that they bake in the oven. I have not had any type of glass or crystal break on me in my oven, but if you're going to bake it at higher temperatures other than 275 Fahrenheit, you may have to test it out. That way, if you have something like this and you finish it and you're really happy, you put it in the oven and then all of a sudden all the crystals explode, um, you don't have to 
be heartbroken because you tested it out and you know they're not gonna break when you're done with the piece. Okay, so now I'm gonna move on to making the paw pads. Now I'm actually gonna be making my paw pads out of resin, but I need to sculpt an original model for that. That way we can make multiples of them. So I'm just gonna be making one set of paw pads. So I'm gonna lay out a nice thick layer of clay and then I'm gonna start adding clay little balls to the top of this, placing them where the pads would be and start using my tools to blend them together. Now I'm just gonna put this in the oven at 275 Fahrenheit for probably about 30 or 40 minutes. Once our pop hat is out of the oven and is cooled to touch, we can start using it to make our molds. So I'm actually going to be using Play-Doh. I found I really like using this to make temporary molds because you can reuse it over and over again. The only thing is when you're letting the resin set, you do need to make sure it's in an airtight area like a Tupperware or something. That way it doesn't dry out and you can peel it off and reuse it. So I'm gonna take a ball of Play-Doh and I'm gonna make sure that it's nice and smooth. It doesn't have any cracks on the surfaces or anything like that because if you push the pad into it with a crack on it, you may end up having that crack stay and mess up your mold. So again, just make sure your surface is nice and smooth and then you're just going to take your pop pad and you're gonna push it into the Play-Doh. Now one thing that's really cool about using Play-Doh for this is it's got a nice texture that doesn't really stick to the clay, so you don't have to use any type of mold release. All you have to do is wiggle it around a little bit and then just kind of pull your paw pad off of the clay. So we're going to take our molds and we're going to put them in some Tupperware, that way we can close them up once we're done pouring our resin. So I've got my resin all mixed up. I've added a little bit of acrylic paint to give it more of a skin color and I'm going to just pour this into my molds. Once I'm done pouring, I'm going to close up my Tupperware and I'm going to put these somewhere safe, that way they can cure overnight. Once it's the following day and your resin is nice and cured, you can take them out of the molds. Now because this is Play-Doh, you will probably have to like scrub these afterwards under soap and water to make sure you got all the Play-Doh off of them, but otherwise they look pretty much just fine. Now just to be safe, because I do know that in between the toes is a little thinner than the actual pop pads themselves, I'm going to be gluing these to some cardboard pieces, that way the backing is a little stronger. So I'm just going to use my E6000 glue, I'm going to glue them to some cardboard, I'm going to let that dry, and then I'm going to cut them out. Okay, so we have the face and the paw pads all finished, and now we're going to move on to sewing the body. So I'm going to show you guys my pattern real quick. It's just a basic fox-like shape. Honestly, you can use this to make a wolf or a dog or really anything with a similar body frame. So I've got the main body, I've got the tail pattern, and then I've got the belly piece. So you're going to need a left and a right body piece, you're going to need a left and a right tail piece, and then you're going to need a belly piece and the inside parts of the legs. So I'm going to start by sewing the tail first. So I'm going to take the two side pieces of the tail and I'm going to sandwich them together with the fur on the inside and then I'm going to sew all the way around it, flip it right side out and stuff it a little bit. You don't need to overstuff it because this is just kind of a thing that's going to dangle a little bit. You don't need to make it nice and firm, just a little plump. Moving on to the body, we're gonna start on the legs now. So I'm gonna take the inside parts of the legs and I'm gonna lay them out on the legs that are on the body piece. I'm then gonna sew down the front of each leg only. I'm not gonna sew down the back, I'm gonna leave that open so we can add our paw pads later. Once I'm done sewing the fronts of all the legs, I'm gonna move on to attaching everything to the belly piece. Now we're gonna add the paw pads to the feet and finish the legs up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a combination of E6000 glue and my hot glue gun. So I'm gonna use my glue gun first and I'm gonna glue the fabric around the base of the paw pad. Then I'm gonna go over that again with the E6000 glue to make sure to get all the seams fixed up. Now one thing I do a lot of the times is not take into account how wide a pop pad or a head is when I'm making my art dolls and an easy way to fix this is to just make a triangle of fabric and then to fill the gap with that. So if you notice the fabric does not reach all the way around the pop pad so I'm just going to take a triangle of my fur fabric and I'm going to glue that to the bottom of the pop pad and then use the rest of this fabric to sew down the back of the leg. 
Once you're done gluing all the pop pads in place, we're gonna let this sit for a few hours to dry and then we can finish sewing up the back of all the legs. After the sewing is done, we're gonna stuff them and then once the legs are all finished, we can add the tail to the back of the body. And then after that, we need to add the head to the piece and finish stuffing and closing up the body. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the head of our fox and I'm gonna glue it into place. So I'm gonna do the same thing we did with the pop pads and we're gonna use our hot glue gun first and then we're gonna go around that with our E6000. So I'm gonna glue this into place, I'm gonna let that dry and then once it's dried, I'm gonna finish stuffing the body and closing everything up. Now after I finished closing up the body, I did go over the legs a little bit with my hair trimmer. So all I did was I went over the very front of all the legs and I shortened the fur a little bit just to shape them up a bit more. Now I just need to make a pair of ears for our fox. So all I did was I took a little bit of felt and a little bit of our fur fabric, I made some triangles with them, and then I just sandwiched these together, sewed around two of the sides, flipped it right side out, and then I just need to glue these into place on those pieces of clay that we have lifted on the face. Once we have the ears in place, we can move on to adding fur to the face. Now I'm going to do this a little bit differently because I wanted to see if I could get a nicer look to it. So what I normally do to fur my faces is I usually cut pieces of fabric to fit on the face and then I glue them into place. Now I'm going to do that with some of the face, but not all of it. So a good portion of the face, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to cover that all in fur fabric. But what I'm going to do around the rest of the face, around all the details and stuff, is I'm going to lay out some glue and then I'm going to cut my fur off of my fabric and place it on that glue. I'm then going to use some tools to kind of place it and move it around to make sure it's in the glue and then we're going to let it dry. Now this method is a lot more time consuming but I found it gives you a lot more control on where the fur goes and it just looks a lot better. So I'm just going to completely cover the rest of the face in fur and then I'm going to let this dry for a few hours before we start on the painting. So for this piece, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using some pinks and stuff. I'm going to really avoid using black because I think it would just stand out too much and I really want this piece to kind of coexist a bit more. And I already have the paw pads and the inside parts of the ears a nice pinky color. So I'm just going to kind of go with that same color scheme. So I'm just painting around the eyes. I'm making sure to kind of darken different areas a little bit and then lighten others. I'm gonna blend it a little bit into the fur, but not much because I don't wanna get my fur looking tacky. I'm gonna do the same thing with the nose. I'm gonna make sure it's a nice pink color. I'm gonna darken the inside parts of the nostrils and then I'm just gonna add some highlights and some shadows here and there. And then we're going to do the same thing with the lip, just a little bit of pink, a little bit of highlight and whatnot, and a little bit of shadowing. The last little bit of detail I'm going to add is just a little bit of a white highlight over everything. So I'm going to let my paint dry. After it's all dried, I'm going to clean up the paint that got on the glass eyes, and then I'm going to apply a thin layer of resin over everything to kind of protect it. I'm going to let this sit overnight, and then our piece is basically all finished. Okay guys, and that's how I made a crystal arctic fox. I had so much fun making her. I made her a couple little babies as well, and these are all gonna be in my Etsy shop, so if anyone is interested in buying them and giving them a new home, go ahead and check the links down below. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If so, leave me a like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.